Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to implement the heap sort algorithm. It's a very intuitive sorting algorithm so that we can sort any list either in ascending or descending order, depending on whether we choose to use a min heap or a max heap. So a heap is a binary tree such that every parent node is greater than both of its children node. That's what we would call a max heap. If we wanted to use a min heap, that's going to be where every parent node is less than or equal to its children. So in this case, we're going to implement this using a max heap. Let's start off by drawing this array as an incomplete heap. So we'll draw it as a binary tree, but we won't actually heapify it until the next step. So we have five in the beginning and then 16, and then we have eight. And then under 16, we have 14 and 20. And under eight, we have one and 26. So to heapify this, we have to consider the last parent node. So that's going to be this eight right here. This is going to be our last parent node because all the rest of the nodes are all leaf nodes. They don't have any children for each other. So we consider eight. So eight is greater than one, but eight is not greater than 26. So we want to move 26 up. So we'll move 26 up here and we'll move eight down here. And now let's move to 16. Well, 20 is greater than 16, so we'll swap those two positions. Now we have 20 and 16. And now we move up to the root node, which is 5. So both 20 and 26 are greater than 5, so we're going to choose the larger of the two. So we'll move 26 to where 5 is, and we'll move 5 to where 26 is. So 26 is now the root, and 5 is now where 26 was. And then we have to continue sifting down 5 until we have a heap. So five is going to switch with eight. So we'll put an eight here and we'll put a five here. And that's all we have to do for this. Now we have a heap. So if we were to write this in order, we would have 26, 20, eight, 14, 16, one, and five. Now this is not in sorted order, but we do notice one thing. And the thing that we notice is that the very first element in a max heap is always going to be the largest out of any of the elements in the heap. So we're going to make use of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate n times where n is the number of elements. And for each iteration, we're going to take the topmost element. So that's going to be the first element. And we know that's going to be the largest. So we're going to move that element to the end. And we're going to move whatever element was at the end to where this largest element was to index zero. And then we're going to sift down five until we have a heap once more. And, and so there's something special about the sifting down in this particular step. So we'll cover that when we write this out. So we switch these two and we get 5, 20, 8, 14, 16, 1, and 26. So now when we go to sift down 5 to make it a heap once again, we're actually only going to consider this portion as our heap because we don't want to touch anything that's after this index. Since after this index, it's all going to be sorted. So here, if we want to see what it looks like, all we've done is moved the 26 here. And I'll just write this in red to indicate that we're no longer going to look at that. And then we move a five here. And now we just have to heapify this heap such that we're not actually going to consider any elements in red since they're already sorted in our list. They're already partially sorted. So here, we're going to move five down in this direction because 20 is greater than eight and both are greater than five. So we'll move five here and we'll change this with 20. And then we will move five once again to where 16 is. So we'll swap these two. And now five is all the way at the bottom. So now our next element at the top is 20. So that's the one we're going to pull out next. And we're going to swap that with the last element. So keep in mind now the last element we're actually considering to be one and not 26. So our list at this point before we sift down any further is going to be 20, 16, 8, 14, 5, 1, and 26. So now we swap 20 and 1, and our resulting list is going to be 1, 16, 8, 14, 5, 20, and 26. And so we do the same steps here. So what we did essentially was we just swap these two here. So this became a 20, and this became a 1. And now we just sift down 1. So 16 is the greatest child, so we'll move one down here, we'll keep 16 here, and then we will swap one and 14. So this will become just one and this will become 14. And so now our list looks like this. So we have 16, 
14, 8, 1, 5, 20, and 26. And keep in mind that 20 and 26 are already in sorted order. So we don't have to consider these when we're heapifying our list later on. So let's move this up here so we have more space to write. So now our next element that we're going to move is going to be the 16. And it is going to be swapped with the 5. So we can swap these two. And now this one will be 5. And this one will be 16. And now we can heapify this heap considering only 5, 14, 8, and 1. So 14 is the greatest child for 5. So we will swap 14 and 5. So this becomes 14 and this becomes 5. And then we have to swap 5 and 1. Keep in mind, we don't consider 16 because it has already been sorted. So this moves up here. And now our next step is we have to move 14 down. So we can swap 14 with 5 because 5 is our last element here. So we'll move 14 down here and 5 here. And actually, we can replace this with red because now 14 is part of our sorted list. And now we have to sift down 5. So 5 can replace 8 and 8 can replace 5. So we'll swap those two. And now our next element is 8, and we're going to switch that with the last element, which is 5 in this case. So we'll swap these once again. And now we can consider sifting down 5, but the only child for 5 is 1, and 5 is greater than 1, so we don't have to sift it down. So we can keep 5 where it is. And now one of our last steps is going to be swapping 5 with 1. So we'll swap those two. And we should get that 1 has nothing to swap with, so it stays how it is. And finally, we swap 1 with itself to get 1. And thus, we have a sorted list from 1, 5, 8, 14, 16, 20, all the way to 26. So this is an unstable algorithm, but it's still helpful if you're going to do sorting in any small way. So let's go ahead and implement this algorithm. So there are a few functions that we're going to define for our algorithm. So we need a main heap sort function, the so def heap sort, and it's going to take a list as input. And we'll just sort the list in place. We won't generate a new list and return that. So we'll need that function. And then for that function to work, we need two subroutines. We need a swap function. Let's say def swap list i j. So we're going to swap at indices i and j for our list. And so we'll just put a pass there. And then the second subroutine that we need is a sift down function. So def sift down list i upper. So this will help us to initially heapify our list. And then every time we want to pull the largest element from our heapified list, we can sift down the element that we swap with the largest element so that we maintain a max heap. So we'll just put a pass here for now. So let's just start off with the easiest function. So the swap function is quite simple. All we have to do is say list bracket i list bracket j is equal to list bracket j list bracket i. And this is quite simple. You don't need a function for this, but it just makes it more concise here. We don't have to write out this verbose piece of code. Now, the next part is the sift down function. So whenever we want to sift down a particular element, this is going to be when we're both heapifying our list and when we're sorting our list. We want to be able to move the topmost element down so that we have the new topmost element being the largest. So we'll put a loop here, while true. And you may see in other instances that some people like to use recursion here, but I'm going to stick with the loop because if we use recursion and we decide to perform the sift down function on a very large list, we could end up with a recursion error because we go up to a certain limit. Whereas with loops, we don't have any such error except for a logical error when we do an infinite loop. So while true, we want to sift down our parent, if needed, to one of the children, if there are any children. So first, we have to get the indices of the children. So with the heap, we can say L comma R is equal to I times 2 plus 1 and I times 2 plus 2. So here, I represents the current parent index. At the very beginning of this function call, it's going to represent the root node of our tree. And we're doing I times 2 plus 1 and I times 2 plus 2 as our left and right indices because this is how we can refer to the children of any parent node in a heap. So these are the indices of left and right children. And then we have a few conditions to check. So first we have to see if there are two children. 
And if there are two children, we're going to do something. But if there's only one child, then we only have to do something with that one child. And then we also have to consider if there's the other child or maybe if there are no children. So let's first consider if there are two children for this parent node. So if max L comma R is less than upper, that means that these two indices are valid. So up, upper here indicates the upper bound of our list that we are intending to consider as a heap. So maybe upper might be somewhere between zero and the length of the list. And wherever upper is, we're only considering our heap to be from zero to that upper limit. So it doesn't necessarily include the entire list. And that's because when we're actually sorting our list, we want to keep the items after upper to be the same because those have already been sorted. So here, if max of L comma R is less than upper, that means we have two children. Now we can check if the parent is greater than both children. So if list bracket I is greater than or equal to max LST L and LST R. If that's the case, then there's nothing more we have to do here. We can end the sift down subroutine. So we can just say break. Now, if that's not the case, then we want to swap the parent with the larger child. So there's two cases here. The left child is greater than the right one, or the right one is greater than the left one. So elif list bracket L is greater than list bracket R. That means we want to swap the parent node with the left child. So swap list I L. Now, otherwise, we want to swap with the right child. So list I R. So here we have swap list at indices i and l, and here we have swap at list indices i and r. But before we actually end these two, we need to add two more lines of code in this condition. So we have to say i is equal to l because we have to move down our pointer for our parent node. Every time we sift down, we have to update the parent to reflect the new parent that we're going to evaluate in the next step. So here i is equal to l, if that's the case, because we swapped with l. And here on line 14, we're going to say i is equal to r because we swapped with r. So we're going to change that pointer to index r. Now, outside this condition on line 7, we want to check if only one child exists. So let's consider the left child. So l if l is less than upper. That means we have a left child. Now, we want to check if this child is greater than the parent. So if list bracket l is greater than list bracket i, if that's the case, then we want to swap at those two indices. So swap list i l. And then here, of course, we need to update the parent node to be the new parent node, which is going to be at index l, because that's where we swapped. So i is equal to l. Now, in the case that this condition fails, that means that there's no longer a need to sift down, so we can break out of this loop. So else, break. Now, in addition to checking if the left child exists, if that doesn't work, we have to check if the right child exists. So elif r is less than upper. And we're basically going to do the same thing as we did from line 16 to 19, except this time with r instead of l. So if list bracket r is greater than list bracket i, we want to swap at those two indices. And then we want to update the parent node to be at index r. So i is equal to r. Otherwise, there's no need to sift down any further, so we will just break. Now, the last condition we have to check is that if there are no children. If there are no children, then there's no sifting down that we have to do because there's no children to actually swap with. So else, break. And so that's all we have to do for our sift down function. So the final part of our algorithm is to actually implement the sorting component. So that's on line 27 and onwards, we're going to define heap sort. So there's two steps here. The first step is to heapify into a max heap. And the second step is to actually sort this. So in the first step, we'll say for j in range length of list minus two, thought of i2. And you can just verify that this number is correct if you go earlier in the video, because you'll notice that this index refers to the very last parent, because any leaf node, we don't really have to check, since those leaf nodes aren't going to have any children to swap with. And then we will end at negative one, and we will decrement by one. And so in here, we can just say sift down at list at index j, and our upper bound will be length of list. So here, this loop essentially heapifies our entire list. Each sift down step is going to sift down each number that we encounter, but here we're just iterating through every item in our list, so that essentially heapifies it. So the final part is to implement the sorting. 
component. So we can say for end in range, length of list minus one, and we'll stop at zero and we'll say minus one. And the reason we're stopping at zero is because by the time we get to index zero, everything else is already sorted. So the number that we're currently at is also part of a sorted list in its entirety. So here the two steps we do is we say swap at list index zero and end. And once we do that swap, we sift down the new first element. So that'll be sift down list at index zero and our upper bound is going to be end. So that just basically means we don't want to consider any item at index end all the way to the end of the list to be part of our heap that we are essentially heapifying. And this is all we have to do for our algorithm. So we can test this out. So let's go ahead and take our list that we tested out before in the video. So list is equal to 5, 16, 8, 14, 20, 1, and 26. And we can say heap sort on list. And let's just print list to see what the outcome is. So I can run this in the console. And I should see that I get a sorted list from 1 to 26. And this is going to work for any list. So maybe I might change up this list so that it is in reverse order. And I want to sort it in ascending order. So maybe I say list is equal to i for i in range 100, 1, negative 1. So this will be all the numbers from 100 to 2. And let's heap sort this. And we can run this. And we should see that we get all the numbers from 2 to 100 in increasing order. So that's it for this video, and I hope this was helpful.